Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. Which of the following statements is are correct with respect to adeno associated virus 2? It is a group of viruses called dependo parvo virus which infects both humans and some primates. AV2 in order to infect the host requires another virus to also be infecting the host at the same time. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is both. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to AAV2 virus, which is why we have taken this practice question. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When you look into the first statement, it says it is a group of virus called as dependo parovirus which infects both humans and some primates. This statement is right. When we speak about AAV, these are nothing but the small viruses. Yes, they do infect humans and they also infect some primate species as well and they belong to the genus dependo parovirus which in turn belongs to the family called as parvoviridae. So the first statement is right. When you look into the second statement, AV2 in order to infect the host requires another virus to also be infecting the host at the same time. This basically means that the AV2 will not be able to act independently in the host. Let's say for example, there is no other virus that is replicating or multiplying at the same time. Will this be able to act independently? No. Which basically means it requires another virus acting at the same time when another virus is acting at the same time that is when AAV2 would be able to replicate and multiply. So this basically means it requires another virus to be infecting the host at the same time. It uses that helper virus in order to replicate inside the human cell and the most common helper virus of AAV2 are adenovirus and herpes viruses. These are very important from the preliminary examination point of view. What is the significance of these viruses? Dependo parvovirus is not in infectious enough to trigger an immune response. This makes it a good virus to use it as a gene therapy tool. This basically means gene therapy is a possible treatment for a variety of disorders and diseases that are genetic in origin. So this can be used in gene therapy as well. So this is the significance with respect to adeno associated virus 2. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following are the quantitative tools used by Reserve Bank of India to control money supply? Margin requirements, rationing of credit, open market operations, cash reserve ratio. The answer to this is 3 and 4 only which is open market operations and cash reserve ratio. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to RBI's repo rate and RBI's repo rate is one of the quantitative tools. So let us try and understand what are these quantitative tools that RBI has? What are these qualitative tools that RBI has? When we speak about quantitative method or the tools or the instruments, they are known as the general tools of the Reserve Bank of India. This has a name called as quantitative which means it is about volumes which means it is about numbers which means it is about the quantity and volume of the money that is present in the market. So how do we control it? What are the tools that are available with the RBI? One, what we have is the bank rate. Second, what we have is the reserve ratio which includes cash reserve ratio, statutory liquidity ratio and third what we have is the open market operations. These are some of the quantitative measures that RBI uses basically to control money flow in the market. Then we have what is called as the qualitative tools. What are these qualitative tools? This includes marginal requirements, selective credit control and moral situations. These are the qualitative measures. So in this practice question, what we have is margin requirements and rationing of credit, which are nothing but qualitative. But when it comes to quantitative tools, what we have is the open market operations and the cash reserve ratio. These two are the quantitative tools. So the answer to this would be 3 and 4 only. Now let's look into the next practice question. 
consider the following pairs. We have the National Park or Wildlife Sanctuary on one side, State or the Union Territory on the other side. Asola Bhatti Wildlife Sanctuary, Delhi, Chinnar Wildlife Sanctuary, Tamil Nadu, Kolleru Wildlife Sanctuary, Telangana, Milgut Wildlife Sanctuary, Madhya Pradesh. How many pairs given above are correctly matched? The answer to this is only one pair. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to Asola Bhatti Sanctuary. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When you look into the first statement, yes, Asola Bhatti Wildlife Sanctuary is present in the Union Territory of Delhi. So this happens to be present along the Delhi-Haryana border, lies in the southern Delhi as well as the northern parts of Faridabad and Gurugram districts of Haryana state. So Asola Bhatti Wildlife Sanctuary is in the southern Delhi. So the first one is right. When you look into the second statement, Chinnar Wildlife Sanctuary is not in Tamil Nadu but instead it is in Kerala. Kolleru Wildlife Sanctuary is not in Telangana but instead it is in Andhra Pradesh and Melgat Wildlife Sanctuary is not in Madhya Pradesh but instead it is in Maharashtra. Since it is only the first statement which is correctly matched, only one pair is right which is A. Now if we have to speak about some of the important wildlife sanctuaries from the state of Kerala, what we have is Chinnar Wildlife Sanctuary, Nayar Wildlife Sanctuary, Parambikulam Wildlife Sanctuary, Pichi Walahi Wildlife Sanctuary, Periyar Wildlife Sanctuary, Wainad Wildlife Sanctuary, Shandranud Wildlife Sanctuary. Then what we have is wildlife sanctuaries in the state of Andhra Pradesh, Krishna Wildlife Sanctuary, Kolleru Wildlife Sanctuary, Kaudinya, Gundla, Kuringa, Sri Malleshwara Wildlife Sanctuary, Sri Penusilla Narasimha Wildlife Sanctuary, Sri Venkateshwara Wildlife Sanctuary and Pulikat Lake Bird Sanctuary. Then finally, what we have is the Wildlife Sanctuary in Maharashtra and Melgat Wildlife Sanctuary belongs to the state of Maharashtra. As part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section some of the important wildlife sanctuaries from the state of Chhattisgarh as well as Gujarat. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following differences between El Nino and La Nina is are correct? El Nino events are associated with the warming of the central and the eastern tropical Pacific, while La Nina events are the reverse with the sustained cooling of these same areas. El Nino means lesser than average rains for India, but La Nina has no effect on monsoon climate. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is one only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference to El Nino and La Nina in this article. So this article makes a reference to El Nino and La Nina, which is why we have taken this practice question. Let us try and understand what is this concept of El Nino. What happens? What we have is a cold current in this particular area along the Peru coast. So if there is a cold current, what does it mean? It creates to high pressure. On the other side, on the eastern side of Australia and in the Indian Ocean, Ocean, what we have is the low pressure. Why? Because there is warm temperature. Since there is high pressure on the Peru side and low pressure on the Australian side, how is the movement of the wind? The movement of the wind is from the high pressure region to the low pressure region. This is the normal circumstances when it comes to the normal oceanic conditions. Since it moves from the high pressure region to the low pressure region there is wind that moves and as a result moisture moves from this part to this part and rain occurs in this particular area but when there is El Nino what exactly happens there is excessive warming that takes place along the Peru since there is excessive warming this particular region in comparison will be low pressure and this particular region in comparison will also be high pressure so the wind starts moving from the high pressure to the low pressure region taking away the moisture from the Indian Ocean and eastern part of Australia to the Peru coast because the wind now moves from west to the east that is from the eastern part of Australia to the western part of Peru the moisture laden winds move towards this particular side because of El Nino and ultimately the western side of South America gets a lot of rainfall. So this basically means India will not get enough amount of rainfall whenever there is El Nino. So remember during El Nino India will not get much of the rainfall but an opposite occurs during the 
la nina when it comes to la nina what exactly happens what we have is advantageous position india will get much better rainfall during the la nina so the first statement is right but second statement is wrong because la nina does have an impact on india as we will have more monsoons now let's look into the next practice question who among the following wrote the poem sub e azadi zahir ludiani faiz ahmed faiz Muhammad Iqbal Maulana Abul Kalam Azad the answer to this is Faiz Ahmed Faiz this happens to be a previous year question from the year 2008 so the subah e azadi happens to be an english language poem by a pakistani poet called as Faiz Ahmed Faiz which was written in 1947 this was in the backdrop of the partition of india leading to the birth of pakistan after 1947 so faiz expresses emotional pain sadness and distress because of the breaking away of the indian subcontinent leading to the new country it also highlights the people's miseries they had to move to a different place that is what is this poem all about so subah e azadi happens to be a poem written by faiz ahmed faiz and this is a previous year question from the year 2008 now let's look into the fact of the day the fact of the day for today's discussion happens to be bedaquiline and this is also linked to a concept called as evergreening let us try and understand what is this bedaquiline and also the concept of evergreening what is bedaquiline this happens to be a medicine this is a medicine that is administered for the tb therapy so all those people who have been suffering from tuberculosis this particular drug is assisted to them so the drug bedaquiline is used to treat drug resistant tb what is the importance of this particular drug people who have been suffering from tuberculosis for a very long time they did not have much of a medicine we did have one of the medicine and that was called as canamycin but this caused kidney damage it also caused permanent hearing losses for those of the people who took it but in order to overcome this there was not much side effects when it comes to bedaquiline so bedaquiline happens to be a drug that is given to all those patients who were suffering from multi drug resistant tuberculosis but then this particular drug was given permission by the united states of america so this particular drug was also given a patent so if a patent is given an exclusive right to this particular organization is given for many years so that no other company would be able to produce this particular drug that is what is called as patent but this patent is ultimately coming to an end when in july 2023 so this basically means that the number of years that they were given permission exclusive rights for the manufacturing of this particular drug is coming to an end as this is coming to an end this particular organization which had created this drug is also going for the secondary patenting what is the secondary patenting first time a patent is given to a drug and then it comes to an end so second time when the patent has to be extended that is what is called a secondary patenting so the second time when the patent is wished to be extended is what is called a secondary patenting it is also called by a concept called as evergreening what is this evergreening basically it is the same company which wants to continue exclusive rights for the production of that particular drug forever it does not want to stop at 10 years 20 years 30 years no it wants to continue with this patent so that it can get more profit and there is no generic version of this particular drug so evergreening means continuation of the patent forever which is called as evergreening but in india what we have is a concept to prevent evergreening where is it present that is present under section 3 of the indian patents act we have one of the sections that is section 3 which says what are not inventions in that what we have is section 3 of d the mere discovery of a new form of a known substance which does not result in the enhancement of the known efficacy of that substance or the mere discovery of new property or new use of a known substance or of the mere use use of a known process machine or apparatus unless such known process results in a new product or employs at least one new reactant added to it a new substance obtained by a 
mere admixture resulting only in aggregation of the properties of the components thereof of a process for producing such substance what does this mean this means there is a drug let's say for example there is one cold drug let's say for example there is a medicine which is given for cold there is another medicine which is given for fever so what exactly happens this company says that this is a drug that is given for cold this is a medicine that is given for fever and they bring it together make it as one single capsule for both cold as well as fever so is it a new invention no what it is adding to is the admixture so they are adding both the components when you add these two components together that is the admixture so for such components no invention will be given and added to it if there is an existing drug to the existing drug you add new chemicals which makes minor changes so this minor changes will again not be given patent for the second time secondary patent will not be awarded and that's preventing what is called as the evergreening this is the concept which have been introduced in the patent acts in india added to it what are not inventions an invention which is frivolous or which claims anything obviously contrary to well established natural laws so we have some of the natural laws that everything that you throw up has to fall down that is an example of gravity so if there is a particular invention that happens which goes against this natural law that cannot be accepted an invention the primary or intended use commercial exploitation which is against the public order or morality if it is going to harm the laws of the country which is against the public order in such a case this will not be allowed as an invention one of the major aspects of patent is invention it has to be unique as well so if it is these causes that will not be considered as invention under section 3 of the patents act the mere discovery of a scientific principle or formulation of an abstract theory is not invention the mere arrangement or rearrangement or duplication of known devices let's say for example you have your laptop on the laptop what you have is your pen drive slot which is on the right side now this pen drive slot is shifted to the left side is it an invention no or let's say you have your uh, your phone's plug which is at the bottom of your laptop now this is placed at the top or on the left side or on the right side so you're just changing the positions this is once again not patented this is once again not given as invention and at the same time a method of agriculture or horticulture is again not a invention plants and animals in whole or any part other than microorganisms are not inventions any process for the medicinal surgical curative prophylactic to render them free of disease is not an invention and at the same time a mathematical or business method or a computer program per se are not inventions literary dramatic musical or artistic work are not inventions because they are covered under copyright and not patent a mere scheme or rule or method of performing mental act or a playing game is not a patent a presentation of information if collecting of the information and presenting to audience is not patent topography of integrated circuits how exactly the integrated circuits are arranged within a device is not an invention an invention which in effect is traditional knowledge let's say for example turmeric which is used to cure something or let's say for example neem these fall under the traditional knowledge and are not inventions so these are some of the important pointers when it comes to not inventions under the patent act it is this that we have to understand with respect to this topic so this is it for today thank you for watching all the best